What is going on everyone? Wade here. Today coming to you with a new series on beginner chess and how to improve. Uh, if you are somebody in the rating range of 0 to 1000, you may get some value out of this video. I will be doing videos on different aspects of the game for you to improve on. So when doing these videos, if you find any videos that you find helpful, feel free to give a like. And of course, if you want to see more, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Now, today we're going to go over the pieces and their values. If you don't know how to move the pieces or set up the board yet, I've already made a video for that. You can check that out and then come back to see what we're going to talk about today. But if you already know how to set up the board and use the pieces, then today we are going to talk about the piece value, what makes them strong, and why you should care. When we look at pieces, we look at them in values. That could be in point value or pawn value. Now, I normally look at them in point value, but some people like to compare them to the amount of pawns that they could be worth. We start with the pawn. The pawn is worth one point or one pawn. The knight. The knight is worth three points or three pawns. Then we have a look at the bishop. The bishop is also worth three points. Next, we're going to have a look at the rook. The rook is worth five points. So let's put five pawns out here just to demonstrate five points of material. And finally, the queen is worth nine points of material. We also have the king. And the king is worth nothing. The king does not have a value like the other pieces do because without the king, there is no game. When we look at the piece value, we use that to determine if a trade is good or not. You've got the rook capturing the knight. That's five points, capturing three points. But if you lose the rook, now you are down two points of material because the knight is worth three, the rook is worth five. If you take them both off the board, white has lost two more points of material overall. The reason the king has no value is because we can't capture the king. We can only put them in check or checkmate. So the king can't actually be captured, therefore it has no value. Without the king, the game is over. That's why we don't assign a value to the king. So what is the purpose of the points? Well, when we're playing the game, we want to ensure that we have more points than our opponent. More points means more pieces on the board with more power, and that power will translate into more tactics and also a better chance at winning the game with checkmate. So when we're making a move, we want to ensure that the result of the move doesn't end up in losing points to the opponent. So if I'm to move the pawn forward, the opponent captures one point of material. I capture one point. He captures one point, And I capture one point. We have both gained two points of material each, a fair trade. In the next example, we look at the rooks. Now it's black to move, and if black captures the rook, they gain five points of material. White recaptures five points of material. Black recaptures five points of material. And white has to move his king out of the way. This has resulted in black losing five points of material, but white losing five, ten points of material. Therefore, Black got the better trade in this game. When playing against other novice or beginner style players, one good strategy you can have is when you're up in material, it's good to trade. Making even trades will result in getting to an end game quicker 
where you have more pieces available. So in this situation here, it's black to move. He can trade the rooks off the board, five points for five points. However, this is going to mean that black has no more pieces left and white will win the game. So that's not a good trade. Black would be better off trying to hold on by finding a way to get his rook out of trouble. White, on the other hand, in this situation, is going to be more than happy to trade because it means that black is out of pieces. These imbalances can come very early in the game. So when you find yourself up in material, you might find that it's a good idea to trade off pieces of equal value. However, I don't recommend trading off pieces where you get the downside to the trade. Here we have an extreme example of pieces that aren't really doing much and probably not holding their value in points. If we look at the bishop over here, it is trapped behind all of its pawns and it can't get out. White's pawns are actually doing a great job of holding it in. So as you can see, it's not really going to do much. So I would say this bishop is not worth as much as it used to be. Let's have a look at the knight now. The knight is also in the corner. It can only go to two squares. It can go here or it can go here. And as you can see, the bishop over here, which I've just put here for the demonstration, is actually covering both squares. There we go, both squares. So the knight can't actually get out because it will be taken. And if it goes over here, it will be taken. So as you can see from this example, not every piece is holding its value. The bishop over here is far better than the bishop here. And the knight over here is far better than the knight over here. Here's another example that we'll go over. We've got the bishop that can take the pawn. Now the pawn is worth one point and you could say, okay, well that pawn is free. So we've just won one point of material. But if white pushes their pawn up, this bishop now has nowhere to go. If it takes back, it's going to lose to the pawn over here. So that's not a great choice. So you've always got to be mindful where you put your pieces and what type of value they will hold. When we're looking at pawns, we look at the squares that they can attack. I'm going to use a rook for this example. The black pawn can attack one square. The white pawn, put it over here, can attack two squares. So as you can see by the two squares that it can attack, it's got a little bit more range of motion and it's got a little bit more control over the table. This pawn over here is probably going to be more valuable than the one at the side. Again, when we look at pieces, we look at where they're positioned on the board. This pawn over here, as it moves closer to the end, actually becomes significantly more valuable than a piece over here. Now, why does that matter when we're looking at the board like this? It's just an example. But if we've actually got other pieces on the board, then you can see that the pieces actually start to have a bit of an impact. This pawn can no longer, sorry, this knight can no longer move because the pawn will promote. So we don't want that. So a nice quick and easy video today, just explaining the values of all the pieces. And just remember when you do trade pieces on the table, you want to make sure that you're getting an equal trade for your, for your moves. Now, if you get the opportunity to take more pieces, more points or pawns than your opponent, then that's good for you. So an example here would be the knight takes the bishop, the pawn takes the knight, and the bishop takes the pawn. Black gains one piece of material over white. And that's how we win the game. If you found this video helpful, feel free to leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. See you later.